Hey gang, in this video, I'm going to show you how to pass A plus in 24 hours. Hey gang, it's Ron from ITMaskey.com and my job is to help each and every one of you guys get certified. So how do you pass A plus in 24 hours? You don't. And I wouldn't advise anybody else to try and pass A plus in 24 hours, but let's just say just in case if you had to, or if you um, been studying and stuff and you got the test tomorrow, this is what I would do if I had to pass the A plus in the next 24 hours. Before we get into that, I would just like to thank all the students in the Zero Time to Hero program and all of the future students who will join the Zero Time to Hero program. The first thing I would do if I had to pass the A plus tomorrow in 24 hours, I would figure out what the hell was on the exam. How can you do that? The way you do that is by going over the exam objectives. So the A plus is a two part exam, right? Core one and core two, depending on which one you want to take first. My students usually take core one first. If you want to take core two first, you can. It all depends on um, what you're trying to do and what you feel most comfortable with your grown. You can do as you like. So core one, is going to be a maximum of 90 questions, 90 minutes to take it. Core two is going to be a maximum of 90 questions, 90 minutes to take it. Now, each one of these are going to be covering different things, right? It's going to be covering different topics. So the first thing you need to do is figure out what's going to be on the exam and which topics and subdomains are going to have the most coverage on the exam, right? Because you don't want to be studying stuff that's not going to actually pop up on the real thing. Next up is making sure that you got the right study materials. For one, making sure that the study materials are up to date. For two, making sure that whatever you're studying is correct, right? Now, if you're using free YouTube videos or if you're using cheap courses, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out, okay, is this the right thing? Does this person know what they're talking about? So on and so forth. So just make sure that you vet the information and that you vet the program or the mentorship that you're getting just to make sure that um, it's giving you what you need to get right next thing is create a study plan so if you only got 24 hours to figure this out and you only got 24 hours to study you should have been studying your ass off before this right but if i had to do it in 24 hours i would separate the domains and then just pretty much hammer in on the stuff that I felt least comfortable with, right? Don't go automatically towards the things that you feel most comfortable with. You need to be looking at and going over the stuff that you feel least comfortable with because a lot of times what's gonna happen inside the exam room, that's gonna pop up, it's gonna shake your confidence and um, it's gonna actually make you question shit that you actually know, right? So things that you actually know, you're gonna be like, damn, is that the right answer? Am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to do that? So I would just make sure that I go over the things that I feel least comfortable with the most. Next thing I would do is just practice, 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 practice. I would go over a bunch of practice questions. I would try and find some simulations. I would try to get really good at figuring out different scenarios, different things that pop up. Okay, if they ask me a troubleshooting question, how do I break that down? What is my thought process? But practicing, 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 actual um, scenarios and simulations as well as practice questions, right? So you wanna make sure that you're getting those practice questions and those simulations from a trusted source as well. And you can even create these exams and ex simulations for yourself, right? So you can have it centered around the things that you suck at, right? You want to make sure that you're practicing whatever you suck at, whatever you feel comfortable with. Nine times out of 10, when it comes up on the exam, you're going to be fine. So just make sure that you focus on the stuff that you're not good at. Next thing is, uh, if I had 24 hours, to take the exam, I would definitely get rid of this thing, right? Get rid of any distractions, anything that's gonna be buzzing, anything that's gonna be beeping, anything that can get in the way, right? Um, believe it or not, a lot of times 
our entire life is on our phone. We do everything on our phone, which means that if we're trying to do a singular thing, it's hard to do it on our phone because there's so much other stuff on there, right? We can hop on YouTube. We can respond to some emails. We can respond to some text messages. We can hop on Discord. We can hop on Twitter. We can hop on this, hop on that. And there's so many different distractions. So I would advise trying to you know, do it on an iPad or a laptop or just something else that's removed away from your cell phone that's gonna help you um, avoid a lot of distractions that come with your cell phone. So the next thing I would recommend would be taking breaks, right? Even though you only got 24 hours, I would be taking breaks. What I usually try to do when I'm trying to learn something new or if I'm just doing work, so on and so forth, I usually do 45, 15. So we'll go hard for 45 minutes, then, you know, fuck off for 15 minutes. But depending on, you know, how you are, how you're set up, um, if you can go longer than that, that's great. But just uh, for me and for most people and just for students in general, I found that 45 minutes is usually the max for them to actually retain stuff and, you know, be able to focus for um, a long duration, then give them 15 minute break and then they can get back to it. Now, last but not least, if you only had 24 hours, I would still recommend getting six to eight hours of sleep, right? I would definitely recommend that you still get those six to eight hours just to make sure that your brain has retained what it needs to retain. You have got some REM sleep. You've been able to have good cognitive use, right? You can actually remember stuff. You can actually um, have analytical and critical thinking and it'll help you um, the next day, right? And then let's say the morning of the exam, I would not cram. I would just try and go over just a few bullet points that I know I do not know this shit. So let me just go through this stuff just to see um, if I got any better. If I haven't gotten any better, I'll keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. But if you're taking the exam in 24 hours or in a day and you're still getting major stuff wrong, you're still getting major stuff um, incorrect, I would go ahead and hold it off for probably about another week, right? Now that's not a failure. Uh, it just means that you just need a little bit more time to prepare, right? Now make sure this isn't doesn't become a theme. Like, okay, oh, I'm not ready. Then oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. If you've been doing this shit for months, some people have been studying for years. When I say studying, you know, that's with uh, quotations or uh, air quotes, meaning that they weren't really studying for a year. But anyway, um, those are the things that I would do to be able to pass in 24 hours. Hopefully this video helps you. If you're looking for more help, if you're looking to actually transition into tech, not just pass a certification, head over to itmatchkey.com and apply to the Zero to Hero program. If we're having open enrollment, you can go ahead and enroll. If it's not open enrollment season, season, season you can go ahead and apply and we can get you, hopefully, get you into uh, some training if you are accepted. Other than that, watch my last video and I'll see you in class.